Jackie. Good morning, Jackie. Sorry, I'm I'm uh I'm in Rhode Island, so I'm on the phone. <laughs> That's fine. But I'm gonna once I park, I'm gonna uh, dial in so I can see the screen. You know, I'll zoom in. Thank you. Thank you. Just waiting on a few um, other members. Is Commissioner Rasmussen just logged on? I was expecting uh, Commissioner Rasmussen to join us. So we'll just uh, give him a few minutes as well as um, Commissioner uh, Sepso who reached out to me. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hi. I think my audio is again. Hi. Hi, Ms. Powell. How are you? Hi. Good. So Commissioner Rasmussen is on. You just okay, have to promote is. him to a panelist okay. and attorney there Bullock is. is on. Good morning, Ms. Bullock and Commissioner Rasmussen. Um, there's someone else attending. Yes, I can hear you. Very good. Uh, we've tr I've been trying for 15 minutes to get into the system. Oh, have you? I'm sorry. I apologize. No I've been here since about 845. Yeah. So I wasn't sure how people were, were trying to click it. Did you click into the join yes. webinar? Okay. Yeah, there was a All glitch right. somewhere. Anyway, yeah. um, okay. great. Uh, Terry Jo, I had asked, could you forward over or someone forward over the, because we've had a computer issue here with the company this morning. I have our IT working on it on our end. It's just one of those days, but, and therefore I cannot get into the file of that includes this um, at the present moment, you know, this presentation. Yep. I'm forwarding it to you right now. Thank you. Excuse me, Commissioner Rasmussen. I sent it to you a few minutes ago from the email that you sent it sent to me. Yeah, I forwarded. Yep, yeah, I sent it. Um, it has yet to come through. Jury, the law okay. passed. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm sending it now. Um, there might be something slow happening with our systems too. So that may have been a part of your difficulty, um, Commissioner, and trying to enter into the webinar as well, because I'm sending the PowerPoint right now to all board members again, just to ensure that we all have it. And um, my system is a little slow. So this is just a part of uh, the world that we live in now in terms of technology. Um, I turn it over to you. I think we have a quorum. Let me just check. I am going to ask any uh, visitors who are participating today to just uh, please state your name for the attendance. Hello, Masi Silverman. Thank you. Jacqueline Boshang. Thank you. And then we have someone from um, KH School also. From the KH School, could you please uh, announce who you are? So for the record. Well, um, I have 906 uh, and I'm gonna commence this meeting here of the special meeting of the Connecticut Appraisal Commission. The topic today, as was the last special meeting is for and only for going over the uh, new edition or draft of the Connecticut law model. Uh, this is going to be picked up from where we last left off and uh, are we at least able to put this up on the screen? Yes. Yeah. 
for the record, I'm aware that is uh, that Linda Robtai will not be able to attend due to um, uh, there's a funeral I believe here today that she has to you know to be attending, and uh, I not I don't believe Vicky is with us as well today. I may be in error on that. There was some uh, conflicting schedules, but they have both assured for us to keep moving forward. Okay. All right, Commissioner, we ended at slide 49 with, just for the record, we ended at slide 49 uh, with you making some additions for the record on slide 109. Houston, I believe Attorney Bullock is on. She has her hand raised. Okay. Can, Vicki, are you there? She needs to be promoted to, um, or you have to allow her to... Let me see if I can do it. Okay, thank you. I just promote and start speaking. Thank you, everyone. Hi, good morning. I am here. Very good. Good morning, Vicki. <laughs> thank you, Vicki. Hi, thank you. how are you? Um, I you indicate I have uh slide 109 is the last one, changed from changed to three hours and 18 hours, but you can tell me you said 49, but I thought we were further along. But I'm yeah, just... yeah, let me um this is Miss Birds on speaking. Let me just uh get us up to speed. We stopped at slide um 65. Um we were um we finished the, the core sequence of 46 through 48, but because of the shortness of time, uh, Commissioner Rasmussen uh, went over slide 109 and slide 65 before we ended the meeting to make comments. And then we decided on the special meeting. So do you want to go over slides 50 and, and up? Where do you wanna start? That would be fine. Let's start with 50. All right, okay. that's where we are now. Yep, thank okay. you. Okay, yep. all right. Can we now forward it now to 51? Okay. So, all right. Let me let me pause for just a second. And and my I uh, my apologies, Devin. Members of the commission and or public, were there any other questions, edits, thoughts, or so forth from slides one through 49 from the last meeting? that would be want to be addressed at this point. Hearing none, then therefore we will proceed forward. Okay, changes in requirements made, appraisal foundation requirements being law in Connecticut. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, and just to let you know, for those who were just sent to everyone here, uh, uh, Rinda's uh, email has just popped up on my side of the fence here as well. So, um, all right, that shouldn't have happened. Excuse me. Okay. All right. Um, hmm. I'm having trouble with my screen. All right, so here we go. We've got all the hours. We have everything in place here. Uh, concerning uh, this screen here, any comments? Pretty straightforward. Hearing none, let's move to the next screen. Okay, again, we lay out, there's been changes. We, you know, no change. We see what we have here, bachelor's degree or higher. Okay, hearing no comments, no hands raised. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay, what if I've already started? Do I have a complete recurrence on track I started or can I complete my training under the new criteria? You must upgrade under the existing requirements at the time you submitted your application as we see here. Okay, questions, concerns? Clear, we, done. Uh, this is John. Do we wanna add anything in there that, you know, the, the commission, I don't, now I'm just talking out loud in terms of options here. Uh, to add anything that, the, or then maybe in the notes that the commission has, uh, uh, can be flexible. I don't know how to say this. Uh, you know, it does handle situations case by case if there's, you know, circumstances or anything like that. Do we need to? We need. We need to go there at all. 
Well, if you want to put in a note that if you need to have an assessment, uh, you know, before the commission is done on a case by case basis or something like that, it's up to you in terms of if you want to have a notation to let them know that they can do that. But generally, in terms of the upgrade, uh, you know, that's reviewed at the DCP level. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to come before the commission unless you want to say that it, you have that option. I'm not sure what you want to convey to the public. Uh, how about exactly what you just said, that it, that it comes to the DCP level? Just, just to, I think it just, because uh, this is, <clears throat> this seems to be, we have three slides on this, which is fine. It's nice and tight and concise. What number, uh, what number slide is that? I just want to make sure. Right, right I'm, uh, I'm talking about 52, 53, and 54. Okay, but where do you want the note to go? Uh, probably uh, uh, underneath 54. Okay, thank you. <laughs> because it's at, the, it's at the end, and it just... Because it's just, it's so important now, and it's what everybody, any new, everybody new in the class is going to be asking, or what what a lot of the uh, people who haven't uh, taken on any provisionals in a long time would be concerned about, et cetera. So I, I just think we need a little something in there just to say there's a little flexibility, just to stop and let it let the instructor pause, and 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 maybe stir up some questions on this so it gets ingrained in everybody, it doesn't just get flown by. So I can say assessments are done by the department yeah. and reviewed and reviewed by the commission on a case by case basis. Yeah, something simple like that. Okay, that's fine. I wrote that down. Reviewed by the commission on a case by case basis for slide 54. Thank you. Okay, very good. Okay. All right. Any other comments on that? Fair, we move forward, if we may, please. Okay, we got our questions and so forth. Let's go to, okay, appraisal update, supervisor training. Next slide, please. Okay. Let me ask you a question, you have to, I just wanna be clear. When you went to that other one, is that slide 55 and this is 56? Cause I can't see numbers anywhere. You mean either. Yes, um, I don't see any numbers either. So this is 56. This is, excuse me, this is 54, 55, 56. Okay, okay. That's fine. Now we're at 57. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, can any, any thoughts? If not, will you move on to the next one? Um, my screen has just gone blank, so um, help me out here. What do we have? Uh, this slide reads Commissioner Supervisory Provisional Relationship Excuses. Check all that apply. I barely make enough money now. I cannot afford the extra time required. These are check boxes. A provisional might steal my clients. I am okay, hyphen with never having a vacation. I enjoy working when I am really sick. I love missing events at my, I love missing events at my kid's school. Uh, those are the check boxes that we are seeing on slide 58. Okay. Any thoughts, edits? Additions. Commissioner no, Russ. Go ahead. It's it's Jackie. Sorry. Um I'm trying to get into Did we lose her? Yeah, I can't hear. Just some sidebar comments. That's my personal opinion. Ja uh, Jackie, you're gonna have to repeat because we heard you say commissioner and then you went dead until sorry, your can you, opinion. Sorry, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I said, I think that maybe that slide could be removed and maybe just, you know, not so many items. I think people tend to roll their eyes when they hear that slide when we're doing our presentation. I kind of agree. I agree with Jackie. I think, you know, our the, the whole purpose of the law module is just kind of stating facts. And, you know, when we have subjectivity, okay, we give a little more clarity on it. But this is something, I don't know, I hear my Irish grandmother yelling at me right now and <laughs> to do something. That I just don't think it's appropriate. To, uh, okay, delete the slide 58. Well, I, I think what was, you know, uh, 
if I, somehow this is in here for a reason, I don't know why we originally put it in here for it, but maybe it's just something that we, uh, as an option, uh, we put that in the previous slide. Uh, maybe we put some comments. I don't know. I, I, but I think I don't think this is really appropriate. It's not a fact thing. It's a, it's a guilt thing. You know, my opinion. Okay. I, I, any any thoughts among members of the commission or public? Okay. Anyone against pulling this out? Hearing none, then so be it. Let it be said. Delight, delete slide 58. Supervisory. Okay. okay. Now, John and Jackie, does that also follow with the next slide? You know, the 59. They seem to go 58 and 59 together. Or not? Well, on, on 59, I just want to jump down to 60 before we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. On 59, I don't think we should have anything about increase your income. And the reason why I say this is every time when we had the AMC legislation, every time we had anything, any time it comes with the, the uh, changing of the licensing law, those different battles, Anything that talks about income is kind of taboo. So I just think we should not have anything in there about the income. If we're going to have the supervisor provisional relationship, which is important, um, you know, maybe we can have just talk about some of the benefits. But I think we need to think these three. I think like I don't see any problem with saying, um, you know, be you know positive things here better professional relations more experience and skill development i mean it definitely enhances you as an appraiser when you're training somebody you know that jerry you yeah. know so i mean i think we can say uh, just leave it as benefits and just leave the benefits who benefits I, I think we can leave that slide there to get them thinking about doing it rather than guilting them into doing it without yeah, talking about income I'm sorry, do you want to just take out the part where it says provisional offers you ways to increase your, uh, you can say productivity as opposed to income. I mean, you can put another word there or do you want to take that sentence out completely? What is your option? What is your? Well, that's that's a good point. That's a good productivity. I think it's a, it's a better word. Okay. So instead of income, productivity. Yeah. Or we might say efficiency, whichever one you choose, but you know, whatever. Productivity. Okay. Yep. That's All fine. Right. That's 59. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then we go into slide 60. Thank you, Ren. Um, what needs to be a supervisor? You can see the good standing. Uh, past three years would affect three years experience, certified appraiser, and possible submission of a sample appraisal. Quick question, have we asked that, you know, this is, and I may be all wet. We, we have that in there. Have we asked for a sample appraisal from supervisors? I can't say that we have, that's, see, that's, that would be a Linda question because yeah. that would come in at that level. Yeah, I don't recall, but that it's good to still have it there. We have possible, you know, and that's fair. Okay. Any thoughts, questions? Okay. Yeah, excuse me, Commissioner. Um, yes. Mr. Silverman has his hand raised. Please, Marcy, go ahead. It, this may be something that's very well known, but do you want to put something in here that you have in order to be a supervisor of someone who's becoming a residential appraiser? You've got to be a residential versus a, a, a commercial appraiser? A good point. I'm, I'm taking a look here. Today. Um, so we have three years of experience, uh, the second bullet down here, the three years experience as a certified appraiser. To take Marcy's thought here, 
are we clear or has that been a teaching note linda and john when you do this that resis for a resi excuse me residential to a residential a general to the general when you're teaching that how have you handled that it's never really come up it's just um uh, but i think there's a i think marcy brings up something here that we could just expand that third bullet a little bit you yeah. um uh and maybe it's in another slide but when when you're registering as a provisional you have to register whether you're residential or going for general certified correct so do we have that in another slide somewhere vicky i'm looking at the next slide i'm looking at 61 just quickly looking here if we covered it there i don't see it let me take a look at 62. Okay. Yeah, I don't see, I don't think we cover it. You know, um, the point that Marcy has brought up here. Um, are we, should we have here, uh, because a residential certified appraiser really cannot supervise a general trainee am i i'm correct on that or am i in error no i believe you are correct on that i mean and they can't get credit and so forth because who's your supervisor and are you in good standing and so forth so maybe there is a point here after the three years experience as a certified appraiser either a sub bullet or a new line bullet you know uh residential supervisors for the residential side whereas a general can be for both residential in general, would that make it more clear? Marcy, you're the one who brought it up and it's a good point. We Sometimes we get too close to it. Would that make it clear to the general public? And you, and I like your thoughts because you're looking at it from the general public's view. Right. Yeah, I think that would work. Okay. Just to put some mention in there. Um, so it, it, and that's something I didn't know um, a, commercial appraiser could supervise a residential appraisal? That's yeah. correct. Okay. Because a general can do residential and commercial yes. under, under the statutes. Then that certainly would clarify it, yeah. Okay. And at some point we get in no more than three, right? I thought I saw yeah, that. It, it goes down a little bit, John. I was looking. Okay, a couple slides down. But so we'll let's just talk. So are we are we good with that? We're going to clarify that before. Okay, so just, just so we're clear, can we go back to number sixty? Three years experience, and instead of having where it says three years experience as a certified, you you want to put underneath of that residential for residential, applicants yes. general for both. That is yeah. right. I, I think you just add another bullet. Yeah, I'm going to add two bullets: a yep. bullet for residential and a bullet for general for both. Okay. All right. But, but thank you. So can we talk about the comments section in there because? You know, right away, Jerry, you jumped on possible submission of sample appraisal. And the sample appraisal, I, I think, would, is something that could scare a lot of uh, people because they're like, what are, we, what are we looking for or something like that? And so in the comments. Um, You're going back one, right? Uh, no, I'm still on 60. Oh, okay. 60? Yeah, okay, yep. where's the sample? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still on 60 and I'm on the comments. Um, you're talking about the notes underneath yep okay yep. Thank you. Uh -huh. so this course satisfies the course requirements um and then it says so what is that actually referring to this course okay so of the course um i think we should say this law module to be a little more clear and then it says uh yes this will affect your ability to supervise if you let your provisional work without a license and uh, provision disciplinary. I'm just reading these out loud because I just think um, it says the review of the sample appraisal is for educational purposes only. No fine or disciplinary action will be taken. Can we say can be taken? No, we can't say can be taken because it could be taken. We have the authority to take it. Will be taken is what we choose to do, but we can take it.
What do you what do you what do you want? Let me ask this. What do you want to say? Well, I I just can hear you know a bunch of people saying I I want I don't want to give any you know I'm being reviewed now. I I just I don't know. I'm thinking out loud here, okay? And mm -hmm. um and I just think it's it, it I guess it's okay right there. It says for educational purposes. I I, I don't know. Yeah. If that should be highlighted or something of that nature. I mean, I think what we're just trying to show, and I, I think the, if I remember correctly, we had that situation where, uh, you know, somebody said, oh, I, the um, uh, supervisor said, oh, well, I looked over everything and the board had said, well, you know, nothing personal, but this is just not a good, um, uh, you know, this is just not a good appraisal. And then that's when we had said, well, maybe we should say that we have the, ability to, to look at it. But again, I don't know that this happened. I mean, we're saying, I mean, this as they say, it's all speculative. I don't know yeah. if this necessarily happened or happened recently that somebody had said that they wanted to be a supervisor. It's not to say it shouldn't be in there, but I'm saying it hasn't happened that we had to, to implement that procedure, if you will, or use that or do that. The other thing too, we got to be cognizant of is we only have 58 or 60 provisionals in the state. And that means there, there is a wall or an apprehension of people to be a supervisor for, for folks. So it's an issue, in my opinion, that the instructor can elaborate on and expand. Um, it gets to be, I don't want it to be ha have a, a bullet in there that becomes scares the living heck out of folks who keep them from being a supervisor. And I'm looking at the long range of, the, of our industry, which goes with the law. So it's a balancing act taken to, into account here. So what are you suggesting, Jerry? I would leave it just where it's at. Okay. We hit it and then we move on. And it's something that for the instructor, if it comes up, that's where the instructor can expand upon. Okay. Any other thoughts on 60? John, do you see where I'm coming from? I, I didn't yeah, I, I do. I, I totally agree with you. I'm not uh, arguing anything. I, I just wanted to think it through a little bit more yep. just to make sure we weren't missing something or creating an ant hole to step in or something, you know? Yep. Any others from other members of the commission or public comment on that? Guess not. Okay. Then we will move to 61. Uh, ability, there we go. The ability to train a professional to inspect, analyze, write, fill out, come to a conclusion. Okay. Any thoughts? Hearing none, then let's go on to 62. What needs to be, what's needed to be a provision? Okay. There's no college education requirement. Provisional level is only valid for six years. Um, and then we have in the comments on delay, it is unlikely that someone could start with only three required courses. I'm, I'm working around my computer here to read, plus completely required college courses can be which is, it says to the next slide, let's look at the next slide. And therefore we have the 75 hours of pre-licensing and one course in supervisor personal education and there how we lay it together. So 62 and 63 kind of go a hand in a glove. Any issues, comments, anything that's come up while teaching it, administering it, taking it. Okay, I think we're okay then to move then to 64. Clearly state what you expect from the provisional. Clearly state what your provisional can expect of you. Um, okay. Uh, we're getting close to that business side of things. Consider creating a contract issue. You know, I have concerns. I think we say consider, so that's fine. But then... Then we go to where we left it off in, in last meeting, I know, or one of my issues or concerns was slide 65. Um, I really need, I really personally believe that run everything by an attorney should be stricken out of there. Bullet. 
I, you can make that a comment under the notes. If an instructor wants to do that, I know Linda is passionate about that. I respect that. But I do believe that we start now, we've crossed that line into a business side of the fence instead of just being a law class. I would take the run everything by an attorney in red. I, I, I would take that bullet out. That's just my opinion. Yeah, John, I guess, no, I understand else. it. My question, as I understood your comment was, I think we should take it out. We could put it in notes. My question is, do you want me to move it to the notes or you're just saying delete it entirely? Personally, I would delete it all, but I, I if it needs to be in the notes for instruction, I can live with it. I, I'm just awful cautious of we've crossed a line here. I put it as delete. I'm when in doubt, leave it out. Let's go next. Okay. Uh, so do we do we even need to go to 64? Because the, the, at 64, supervisor consider creating a contract. So I kind of think I know where this how the history of this evolved. But we don't have anything in our state statutes or our regulations that talk about contracts between the appraiser and the provision at all. Right? No. No. I agree. I, I maybe we strike out 64 and that line in 65. So if we take out 64 altogether, yep. And now we're into 65 shows up. Well, yep. so we don't really need 65. That goes, that just comes out altogether too. I just okay. don't think we have anything in our in our that talks about that. The the whole relation. Yeah. Yeah, and so your contract, you may say your agreement may include or understanding, but boy, I'm I'm awful concerned, I guess, on the legal side of the fence here. We are a course of the Connecticut law, and we're not in here for how to run a business. Right. And I boy, we are we are right up against that line. When we have everything run by an attorney, we've crossed the line. I don't. I, I think we should take. My vote is to take out sixty four and sixty five. Any other comments? I agree with you, John. But any other comments to the contrary, and that's okay, uh, from anyone else on the commission and or the public. Commissioner Rasmussen, it's it's Jackie. I I agree that you know you're you're probably should remove that. You might want to just put an aside note under notes about reminding supervisors to you know. Um, best business practices or something like that for the for the supervisor but I think you definitely don't want to have anything in there you know with the contract but you know you might want to put an agreement or something like that but again I, I agree with what you're saying that's a good point where would we put that let's see here so we would we could go back and put that in that other slide where we had the bullets I think it was 62 us no, 61. 61. Here? Yeah. Well, in, in 61, we have supervisor professional relationship, what's needed to become a supervisor, an ability to train, and then you down maybe in the notes, we can say you might want to consider doing an, uh, an employment agreement or something like that, or, or a... a, a, a Where's Vicky? We need Vicky with the. Well, on 61, where it says what's needed to become a supervisor, it says an ability to train and provisional inspect the property, analyze, fill out the forms, and all of that. You can generally tell by a three to six month mark whether your trainee is ever going to get appraising. I, you know, you could put it there under the notes at that point, you know, if they're going to get it or not. You know, you may want to have a contract to see because, you know, that's the period of time in which you're kind of assessing that person. So I think conceptually or thought-wise, it could, it could connect with 61 in mm -hmm. terms of the six month mark or whatever, it can go in notes there. If it were to be placed somewhere, that's where I would put it in notes on right. 61. But in my opinion on slide 61, I was gonna bring this up at the end. I don't really think we need 61. I, I think, you know, if there are already a, licensed or certified appraiser, we're already trusting that they can go out and do the, the appraisal process. So, you know, I think one of the things to keep in mind, and, and I agree, we can take out whatever if you think people have already, already understand the process, but remember this was as a result of trying to 
ask people to become this. And people didn't know what that meant. What does that mean to become? What do you want to, or what are the requirements to do that? This was where you guys had wanted to put it. So, you know, if you're taking it out, when people will have questions, where do they get the answers? Is my question to you. Okay, that answers my question. I'm not saying don't take it out. I'm saying you have to, if, as, I, as I understand it, a part of the whole, this process was we need to attract more people to this profession and, you know, we have to tell them how. I, I, you know, we can have fewer slides, they can be condensed or whatever, but if you take out everything, you're not really ever really introducing them to the concept. My thought. If we leave 61 there and make that put under a note there, John, I think that will. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do understand what you're saying, and I, and I think that's a good option. And I would also now it got me thinking, and now rereading it, I've missed it. I again, I reviewed this on a plane and and what have you. We go inspect the property, analyze the data, write a defensible report. Is would it be? I don't want to put anyone on their heels. Do we write a supportable report? Ah, defensible is fine. That's fine. I don't, we don't need to, you know, wordsmith it to death. Okay. So if we put that there. Let me ask this. Do you want to put, uh, Jerry, I just said, write a defensible report that supports your findings? Uh, you know, I, you can combine it if you want to put that. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it's tough. I'm just, I can't hear you. It's going back and forth. It's, 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 um... okay. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I think we can leave it right there, Vicky. If thinking about it, if you're instructing, you can. I can hear myself or someone just going off the, you know, defensible and supportable. You know, it, it's one of those things. I think it's just fine now that I look at it. So, do I understand this correctly? Then we are going to take out. Um, As I understood, slide sixty-four. Four and 65, 65, and as a note on yeah. 61, put consider an agreement. That's it. We're not yeah. telling what should be in it. If you want me to put the stuff that says that stuff from that slide, I can. The slide that's up, which is whatever that number is. Uh, you know, you might want to just say you may want to consider an employment agreement, a uh, written employment agreement. Um, okay. And so then. You know, and then they can elaborate on it themselves. You may want to consider an employment agreement. That's, I think that's sufficient. And then just make sure you take out your contract may include up on the top. Well, do, what slide is that? That's 65. You want to take all of those things there? No, I thought we were going to, yeah, take out 60. Well, let's see. 64 and 65 were going to come out. Right. So as a result, in note 61, I'm just saying you may want to consider an appointment agreement, period, done. I'm not telling them what has to go in the appointment agreement. Like you said, we're not giving them law. We're not telling them what should be in there. You say you may want to consider. If you want to consider finding an attorney who will do it for you, period, yeah. done. I agree. Okay, that's it. Note, we'll say that. Okay, that's fine. All right, now we go to 66. And 67 both seem to go together here, right? With the questions that go off to 66. So if we go back to 66, I'm sorry to make you bounce back and forth and thank you for working with me. Um, I think that's great. College degree is not required to become a provisional. Supervisor training me not supervise more than three provisional appraisers at one time. And all supervisor appraisers must attend the provisional appraisers interview log review session before the appraisal commission. I think that is fine. What is the reminder tag in there for? Is there a reason well, for that? Goes in just to tell people, like this is in a, it's almost like putting a, an asterisk or a note or something like a highlighter. That's okay. all, it doesn't have to be if you want to take it out, it's fine, whatever. Okay, that's, I'm just, that's fine. I wonder what was being, we're reminding of really what's everything on that page. Okay. All right, can I get a quick thing in here? Um, is there anywhere, do we get to where we discuss this log a little bit, maybe in the notes? Because uh, one of the things that we keep seeing is, uh, you know, we're, we're, maybe there could be a note where the instructor says regarding the log, you know, to review the log quarterly, which I think is, is I think the regulations actually say something. You have to review it quarterly. 
Isn't that right? There, there's something in there that, because uh, whether it's in the, I have that in my head because I have two provisionals and I know quarterly we check the log and Jerry, do you have anything on that? Yeah, if take a look at uh, slide 67, John, and go into the notes, okay? It doesn't exactly address of what you're saying but it starts to get into it here. You know, the only work that will qualify you towards certification is the work you did with a supervisor is registered with the state. How's your supervisor? Are you going down that road too, or are you not really? No, that one I think is a great point right there. I'm fine with that. Uh, but I think the log itself, filling out the log itself, um, Maybe we don't need to even discuss that here because it's not, but it, it should be a comment to remind them that the log should be, you know, let me, let me, let me, go, let me go back. Let me go back and find out where I got that from. And if then. I remember correctly, we did have in here previously, we did have a sample log. Um, there either was a link to a log, how a log should look because didn't we, if I remember correctly, and Linda probably would know more so, but I, I thought that there was either a link to the log or we had it on the website because there was a, a sample log. We had a sample log as part of what we provided to um, people and the public in terms of what your log needed to look like before you came before the commission. Yeah, that, that's out there. And I don't have any problem with the format of the log. It's just that when we re every time we've rejected a log, why we have rejected it? We've rejected it because of uh, overlapping. It's repetitive. It says the same thing over and over and over. You know that the, the first one they did, they did the whole report. You know, as opposed to the last one, they did the whole report. You know, John, there's no progress in that log. John, I'm I'm looking ahead. I think we kind of hit upon it, but not completely. If you go all the way to 73, it's in the next section where we going supervisor appraiser and expectations and responsibilities. And if we get down to 73, we verify that you as a supervisory appraiser and the provisional appraiser are properly documenting all experience laws. And if there's ever a place to put it, here we we talk about the logs, you know, that should be reviewed and signed off every quarter. Do you know what I'm saying? I think that's perfect. But in the in the notes down there, yep. That we you're right. We were just we we covered. I knew we covered it somewhere. I read it somewhere. You know, that we were a few slides down the road, and therefore we put the responsibility or let me rephrase this, that everyone gets responsibility, but the primary responsibility on the supervisor to help John Q or Jane Q trainee provisional, hey, you know, hey, Jerry, you got a responsibility every quarter. You got to sit down with your, you know, your folks, let's go over it, what have you. And in theory, you're supposed to, you know, sign off on that on a quarterly basis. Yeah, because we had the one guy that, uh, Remember the guy that came in that his supervisor wasn't paying attention to him and he yep. expired and yep. yeah, so. we have many stories. Yeah. So uh, that being said, let me then rotate back up to 70. This is the appraisal law update, supervisor appraiser. And let's make sure we're all in agreement here. Provide guidance, company provisional appraisal all inspection until the you know provisional is competent to do the inspections independently identify, acknowledge, and, and so forth under use path. I have any comments on that slide. I think it's pretty clean, pretty nice. We go then into slide 71. Um, excuse me for one second. I just wanted to make sure there were no notes that should have been added within that, before we start the next section, there were no notes that should have been added. Um, there were no notes that should have been added. Because I had all slide. supervisors was registered with the state prior to them supervising me, and I had notes. Um, were we going to add notes, or we're not going to add notes? No, uh, I think Jerry brought up the point, Vicky, that we can add it when we get down to this other slide. Okay, that's fine. I'm taking it out. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I just want to make sure we we got everything with the notes. We're going to tie it all up. Seventy, we're fine. Unless anyone says anything, I raise your hand or speak up. Okay. 
71. Meeting to notify the provisional appraiser if you are no longer qualified or able to supervise. Notify DCP if necessary and monitor, provide assignments and duties and ensure. We have some notes under there. I think whoever did this, I applaud them. Uh, you know, okay. th that you have that covered there. Thank you. I think 71 is good, unless someone says something. 72, here we go. Monitor the appraisal's progress and satisfying the education experience requirements necessary to achieve the desired credential. Understand, verify the AQB requirements as well as the requirements for state Connecticut, both you and the provisional appraiser. This is where, here I was talking about, it can go either way. You know, we can put the note at the end of 73 when we tag it all along because we talk, start to talk, monitor the appraiser's progress and satisfying the education necessary to achieve his or her desired credit credential. That's the first bullet in 72. We could have a note in there or you, we could put another thing needs to be signed off every quarter on your lock. I don't care which way you want to handle it. that may be the John that's the place to put it because it ties right in there, you know? Yeah, you I, I'm, I'm agree right with underneath. I'm sorry, Vicki. I'm sorry, did, where it says verify that you as a supervisor person are properly documenting all experience law. Do you want it underneath as a bullet as opposed to a note? Yeah, I think so. I think that from John's point, you know, it gets more emphasis. It's the law. We have to sign off every, you know, every three months, every quarter. Okay, sign off on loss quarterly. Yep. Yep. Is that okay with any, anybody have a contrary opinion? Feel free. It's okay. No, I think just in if you if we put that in, which I I like, in and down and then the notes on the bottom, and it says. Um, Maybe we put something out that when the supervisor is signing the log quarterly to review the log to make sure the log is showing the proper progress of the uh, provisional. Something to that effect. Because you know what happens is these guys, no one does it. They, okay, it's time to go get certified. Throw your log together, I'll show it to me, I'll just sign it all. And, and there's no progress, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think by, by just something there and, and you know as the provision you know you're talking six years they get into year three and four if they haven't done anything a lot of times they're running you're just giving them an assignment and they're going giving them assignment and going you're not really taking time out anymore I, I, mean, I don't know I think we should just put something in there um, okay, well, I, okay I'm writing your note which is when the supervisor is signing the log be sure Qu to quarterly quarterly signing the log the supervisor is quarterly signing the log, okay? Um, be sure to show progress. Now, when you say show progress, are you telling them what that progress is or? No, this, this, uh, uh, it's an, op an opportunity to review the log. How do we say this? How do we say this? It's an opportunity for the supervisor to review the log so that it is properly showing the progress of the provisional. Okay, okay, it's an opportunity, okay. Excuse me, Commissioner. Uh, Marcy has her hand raised. Please, Marcy, the floor is yours. <laughs> the other thing I might add is just a reference to the uh, regulations that govern mm -hmm. the supervisor. So that if someone leaves the seminar and wants to start considering it, they may take a look at it and see what's going to be required of them. That's a good point. Where do you want to put that? That's a good point. Where do you want to put it? I would put it. Well, we have to put it in the slide. Yeah. So it's just maybe right there. Just, you know, yep. just the link. Mm -hmm. um, you want to go back to 70? Proper guidance when you select the tab, whatever, here on that page, you want to put the link there. Right well, that's got that that page has got a lot on it. I would put on 72. Seven. Yeah. 
two. Okay. The link, you just want the link or what do you want to say? You know, we're making that comment that it also, aren't we having in there, we're adding that they're going to uh, have to sign off quarterly. That's on 73. 73. Oh, excuse me. Then I would put it right behind 73. I'm so sorry. Right after you say that, where the link, I would take Marcy's suggestion and tag it right with that. I'm sorry. Are you saying, I'm saying, say it again. You want the link where? We're going to put in that bullet that we were talking about that you got to sign off quarterly, correct? Right. And then put, you want to put the link there. I would. Link to regulation. I got it. I just yeah. want to make sure. Yeah, okay. no, no, we're on. That's good. All right, very good. Link to leg uh, regulation, excellent, got it there on page 73. And then in a the note, we're gonna put, uh, when supervisors quarterly sign in law, it's the opportunity for the supervisor to show progress. Right. Okay, very good, got it. Okay. So then we have questions and answers on 74. Mm -hmm. I think we've covered that section pretty well. So then we go into 75, Provisional appraiser expectation responsibilities. 76, we have the chart with their college requirements and so forth. We lay that out pretty well. 77, selecting your supervisor appraiser is an important part. We lay that out. 70, what I'm going to, I'm just going to speed through here to that section and we can go back. Then we talk about by before selecting a supervisory. So we're looking through the eyes of the gentleman or lady of the provisional side. We got an understanding of how to determine appraisers qualify a good standing. 79, which is best for you, resi or commercial. And you and it's good whoever put the remember, you, you can have more than one supervisor. That took care of a lot of issues. 80. As a provisional, you should consider, you know, the com different components. Okay. 81. I think that lays out, boy, hits the four bullets pretty, pretty efficiently. 82. Okay, I understand both your responsibilities and that of the supervisor, but documenting all the appropriate experience in your logs. We've already covered that, you know, in previous, so no sense being, I mean, the, you know, quarterly situation. And then we said in 83, provisional appraiser expectations, responsibilities, we go through that and all inspections until they are competent to conduct the inspections independently. That is whoever put that in, kudos to you. Whoever did it, good. Make every effort to understand construction amenities and so forth. Then we have questions and answers. Anything you would want to change or suggest or edit from slide 76 through 83 in the arena of provisional appraiser expectations and responsibilities. Okay, do we have anything in here that, because I didn't see it, we, we had this come up a couple of times where the provisional, uh, some of the uh, AMCs do not allow the provisionals to sign the appraisal, but they put it in the certification that the, the provisional provided significant appraisal assistance to the person signing this report. Could, should we bring that point up that that's acceptable? Is it, uh, is that a note, John, or would you like a bullet? I don't care. Uh, I think it's an important point that we should uh, put on the table. Where would you want to put it? Or, uh, you know, or how, and then where? Well, I don't think. Uh, can I make a question? Can I make a, can I make a comment? Please, please. Is this an area, and it's just a comment, is this an area for like what's trending or no? You just want it to just be because it's a part of the practice per se. You know, we don't even have to put it in the provisional section because that section is for the provisional. I think the supervisor needs to know that because a lot of supervisors might have a problem with somebody signing a report, you know, uh, 
in the beginning. Maybe there's an option to put it in one of the slides for the supervisor. So John, you, where would you want to go? We're going back there. That's, um, do you want, you want a, a slide item, John, or do you want a note? I think we can put it as a note, note because it's before question and answers on slide 73. Okay. A note, I can, we can probably put it in as a note down there that says, uh, you know, note, the provisional does not have to sign the report if they they can as long as but they have to be mentioned right we're not going to accept that appraisal if they're not mentioned in the certification correct that's correct so can I, can I, ask, a can I ask a question as i understand when you're <clears throat> saying putting something in a note then you tell me from your experience does every person go over the note and the slide or are notes optional? <clears throat> is it optional to uh, review the note? Some some may put more emphasis on the, I'm asking, I don't know. I'm asking you, uh, John, because you do it. All right, so uh, when, when I teach the class, or when, you know, well, what, what's, after you teach it several times, you kind of know this stuff, but the notes, you kind of read the notes because the notes usually, usually what happens is somebody asks a question and, if, and you know this question will come up or other questions come up the notes are a way to where you can add as an instructor too so i can take this when you're done and if somebody asks me a question i can answer it there or put a couple of bullets things that i want to emphasize on the on, a, on the slide so the instructor is or should be looking at these notes so it's an opportunity but you know slide 73 we're almost halfway through so that might be a break point too you get into question and answers, and that's an opportunity for the instructor just to bring up points. I, I don't know if this is something that's really necessary to put in a, a, a slide or a note. I mean, I, I think it's something that we should get out there, too. Uh, again, I'm talking off the top of my head here. So you would you want to under 74, John, is a note because we haven't it wouldn't get lost in in the traffic, for lack of a better phrase here because we have all the other notes coming up for that, there's no other note under 74 under Q&A. And that may be the spurring for the instructor and or whomever. Okay, that's the only note on here to make sure that you covered it during that. Yeah, we could put it there. But I mean, it, Jackie, do you see an issue with that? No, I think it's fine. Um, you know, the one thing is if it's something very relevant, and this is not even just pertaining to this slide, is that the, all the participants slash students do get a copy of this handout, they will not see the notes. So if it's something that you want them to have as a reference point, then I would put it in a slide. If it's something more to just, you know, facilitate the, the program, then it can go in the notes. But if it's something that you want to really target to the, to the you know, participants, you would want to put it in the PowerPoint itself. All right, so that said, I think it should go, in my opinion now is that it should go in the slide. And I think it should go on, we have a couple of options. We could put it in the, where do we put it? I think a separate slide, no, honestly. Because again, we're trying to give people fresh information with a new slide. This is something that they should be focusing on. I think it's a new slide. I think it's new slide worthy. How about that? <laughs> okay, so you would make, we, we would put it, after number 73 and before 74 on the Q&A? Absolutely. All right. Um, I, I want the public's opinion on this as well. Does that make sense for if you're sitting in the class? No, we, sometimes we get too close to it here. Uh, Jackie or Marcy or whomever else may be out there. Does that make sense? Maybe they're not with us now. It, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, fine. Okay. Agreed. That makes sense. Okay. So I value your folks' time and commitment here with us trying to make this better. So don't hesitate to speak up, please. I appreciate it. Okay. John, that's good with you? Yeah, that's good with me. Okay. My question is, what do you want the slide to say? Go ahead, John. 
Where's the magic person who put all the other slides together? They're doing such a good I'm job. Here. I'm, I'm taking directions. <laughs> I am. I, I, look, I'm, I'm here. I'm taking directions. <laughs> I'm putting, together, I'm, I'm putting together. I want to convey your thoughts so we don't have to do it again. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, what if we just had the title that said uh, supervisor slash provisional? That's uh, a given. The supervisor, that, that's a given because it's under the section. In terms yeah. of the content of what you want to say about the um, yeah, uh, yeah um, work log, just say work log, and we, we could just put the work log. And here we can now throw in that the work log uh, has to be signed quarterly by the supervisor. Um, the appraiser does not have to sign a report to be entered on a work log. The appraiser, however, the appraiser, the provisional has to be mentioned in the certification that he contributed some sort of significance to the report. And and and, and on that note, can it, if an appraiser you get three dots, so you had the work log, it must be signed. <laughs> must, must be, be signed. quarterly. Two, uh, the, the 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 provisional does not have to sign the report. They can be mentioned in the certification. And three, the work log should show the progress of the provisional over the, over the time, over the three thousand, over the hours, something like that. Okay. Now, in the notes of that, because this is going to come up, if in the beginning when you're taking the provisional out and they're just doing town hall work and just doing some research, they don't necessarily have to even sign the certification. That, that's correct. Uh, so um, we might wanna just put a note that, you know, in the beginning, the appraiser does not, the provisional does not have to be mentioned in the certification or sign the report to still get credit on the work log for it, when they're, doing the initial learning how to do initial research something like that am i making a lot out of this jerry are you on board with this no we're, we're fine we're fine Vicky, does that make sense to you you're able to put something there yeah okay as, as, as i understand it you just i'm gonna have three i usually have no more than three things on there that's the yeah. maximum amount Okay. Work log, uh, you know, must be signed by the supervisor. Appraiser, uh, provisional appraiser, um, um, must be mentioned. They don't have to sign, but they must be mentioned in the certification. And they that the log must show uh, progress over time of the provisional over time, something along those lines. Okay. Okay. And in the notes, you want something else in the notes or no? John, this is your area. I think you got it covered with the bullets. I think so too. You know, honestly, this is, I think this is a good summary, if you will. Yeah. yeah. You're okay, John? John, you might be on mute. Yeah, when we see it, we can uh, review it and if Absolutely. it has to be tweaked, tweaked. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I don't, uh, and I know we went through, through 84. We are going to have, because we, um, we said till 10, it's 10.05 now. Okay, so this we're is a good gonna stop. To, we, we're gonna are have we to adjusting our numbers? Because I added a new slide. So this is gonna be slide 70, 74 now. So the question answer is gonna be 75. And no, you're keeping the numbers as they were before. Well, you're gonna be taking two slides out too. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So, all right, I just added, I just put it in where it should be. That's fine, I get you. Yeah, all right, okay. All right. What I would do is when we commence on this again, we will just pick up on We'll still work off of this document 85 because uh, on the, you know, the page number. So we're all working on that. Okay. And then when we get done, we'll look at it all there. All right. I'm going to have to call the meeting to a conclusion here. Um, we can, we have a meeting next week, our regular scheduled meeting. And I think at that time we can all look at our schedules and then try to set up a separate um, uh, time you know going forward from number 85 to where we're at right now okay i can the one thing i would just like to add i'm on vacation not that it matters but um 
Fridays work probably best for me because my investigators are off. And so I don't have to communicate with them. So I could devote this time, you know, an earlier time to getting this done. If On a Friday, you say Friday, Vicki? I'm saying Fridays are probably work-wise better yeah. for me. It's not that it matters for me, but I'm just saying, and Linda also, because Linda and I usually get together to do this stuff on Fridays. Okay. Uh, let's look at our schedule and we will set that at next Wednesday's meeting for our next special meeting. Is that fair for everyone? Yes, uh, uh, Commissioner Rest uh, Moosen, this is Ms. Birdsong. Um, because I'm coordinating all of the boards, um, uh, I will also uh, be manning the 713. So any dates um, I'll need to verify as well in terms of um, what's available on our board coordination piece in terms of managing all the boards, okay? And exactly, you are our gatekeeper. You got to keep us in the fairway. So don't ever hesitate telling us what works and doesn't work. So I think- Okay, thank you. All right, very good. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, you know, we're putting the time in. We still got some going to do. I want to thank everyone for their comments, especially from the public members of Marcy and Jackie. Um, and uh, we're we're working it. And Ms. Burtonk, thank you for coordinating us and keeping thank us you. in the fairway. So thank you and everybody. Have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank Have you. Bye.